For those eligible, there are some nationalities that allow you to do what's called a visa waiver to the US. It's the Electronic System for Travel Authorization, abbreviated as ESTA. It's a pretty straightforward application. I've had a lot of people complain to me saying, oh, but it's actually really complicated. I didn't like the application and I can see why, but overall it's a fairly straightforward application. I've helped many of my friends with theirs and it is, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. So first what you want to do is go to the official website, which I've linked in the description below. If you already have an existing application, you can click on that button. If not, this is your first application. What you need to do is click on create new application. It's gonna ask you if it's an individual or a group of applicants. So what we're gonna do for this demonstration is individual application. You're gonna go through here, just read through it, make sure you understand, click confirm and continue. It's going to take you to this screen. It's just a disclaimer, have a read through. If you agree, click yes. If not, click no. I'm gonna click yes for this demonstration and then it's gonna take me to this bit here have a read through. If you don't agree with it, click no. I actually think if you click no for everything, you probably just can't do the application. But if go ahead and click yes, that you understand about the fee that's going to be collected. And once you're ready, click next. So here you need to upload your passport and have a read through. It tells you how to basically upload it. And once you're ready, click on upload your passport. You'll be asked here, are you going to upload your passport from your camera or from your gallery? Whichever applies to you, go ahead and click on that and upload your passport. If you're happy with everything, have a look, make sure your passport's legible. You can see everything like that passport number. Everything is crystal clear. And once you're ready, click on add to my application. If you don't like how it looks, click cancel and try again. But once you're ready, click add to my application. After you've uploaded your passport, the system will automatically populate your passport details here. So just have a read through, make sure everything is correct. When I went to do this, it did not include the issuance date or the expiration date. I did have to manually do that. So just double check that everything is correct. Have a read through. You can see it doesn't put in your city of birth or country of birth. You might want to put that in. Do you have any other citizenship or nationalities? Now, I have quite a few friends who do have a passport that allows them to get the ESTA and another passport that would have to get a visa. So they were a little worried that by having this passport that did allow them to get an ESTA and the other, which was a nationality that would require a visa from the embassy, they were a little nervous about it, but I said to them, just be as truthful as possible. Just be very transparent. Say you do have this other nationality and they declared it and they had no issues whatsoever. I would just double check that your other nationality um, basically still allows you to get an ESTA. There are some that would prevent you from getting an ESTA and you'll need to check the official website, which I have linked in the description below in their frequently asked questions section. It is a little niche, but definitely have a read through just to make sure you definitely do qualify for an ESTA. If you do have some travel history, which the US might flag, for example, they would definitely not allow you to get an ESTA. So again, you need to have a read through and make sure you do qualify. So here you see they want your email address and what they're going to do is they're gonna email you to verify that your email address is correct. When you do initially finish your ESTA application, you're gonna get the confirmation sent to that email address. So just make sure that you do enter in your email address correctly and you do verify it. And so once you're ready, go ahead and click next. After you do click next, it's going to prompt you just to confirm that your name is correct, your date of birth, all these questions. It's gonna just double check that everything is correct about your application. And then it's gonna ask you to verify your email address. And here it's asking me to enter the code. So check your inbox, make sure you did receive that email. If you've not received it, check spam. I received mine instantly. So once you've done that, click submit code. After you've submitted your code, you're gonna be taken to this page. And if you have your email open, you've probably noticed that you have received your ESTA application number in your inbox. It came through quite quickly as soon as I validated that code, but you don't need to look at that just yet. Just definitely not delete it, just keep it on file. So here on this page, you're gonna enter in your personal information. They wanna know, have you been known by any other names? Have you ever been issued a passport national identity card for a travel by any other country? They want your contact information and your social media, they say is optional. To be very honest with you, I've had friends just not include it and it was fine. I have had some friends include it. And again, it was fine. 
I honestly don't know what they do with it, but I, I haven't seen any issues with people including it. If you have Global Entry, Nexus, or Century membership, you need to answer this question. They also want your parents' details. If you don't know your parents' details, I would probably have a look into that because they are gonna look into this. They also want your employment information. And so answer all these questions as truthfully as possible. They will check, they are going to look into this. So be as truthful as you possibly can. If you're not sure about some information, like maybe you don't really know your parents' names, check with them. Just be as honest as possible with your application. And once you're ready, go ahead and click next. Here you need to enter in some travel information. Is your travel to the US occurring in transit to another country? So if you're flying from say the UK to Costa Rica and you're transiting in the US, the answer to that would be yes. If you're just going to the US just to have a nice holiday, you would click no. So if we click here on no, it's going to then ask for your US point of contact information. So here I would put your name and where are you going to be staying? So if you're going to Walt Disney World, include the name of your hotel and their phone number. If you're going to Vegas, put down that hotel's information. If you're staying with friends or family, put down their information. If you are transiting and you click yes, it doesn't ask for anything further than that. And then you see here they want emergency contact information. So when you do fly to the US, you will see that as part of your check-in process that you are going to have to give some emergency contact details. I would then put somebody who they can contact. Maybe this is somebody at home that you could that you trust that they could get a hold of if something happens to you or maybe it's your friend that you're visiting in the US. You could provide their information. Anybody that you trust to be your emergency contact. So once you're ready, go ahead and click next. Here on this page are the eligibility questions for the ESTA. Answer these as truthfully as you possibly can. I would not lie. If you lie, they're gonna find out and then you're really gonna have problems. So have our read through, answer these as truthfully as possible. And you remember I was mentioning something about eligibility based on your travel earlier? Well, if you have a scroll on down, you can see here on point number nine, if you've been to any of these countries, it's possible you will be rejected for your ESTA if you have traveled to any of these countries on or after the 1st of March, 2011. I know Cuba is a very popular destination for a lot of tourists going to the Caribbean, enjoying the beaches. I would pay particular attention to that. Um, and then have a read through your waiver of rights, the certification. If you are applying through a third party, they'll tick this box on your behalf, so don't worry about that. Have her read through, be as honest as you possibly can. I would not lie, they're gonna find out if you lie. So answer everything as truthfully as possible and once you're ready, go ahead and click next. You're nearly done with your ESTA application and here you're just going to need to review your application. So you're gonna have to open each of these application windows and they want you to confirm that everything is correct. So if I just click on this travel information open that one up, you can see here that confirm and continue. So once you're ready, go ahead and click next. Here on this page, you're gonna pay now and complete your application. What you want to do is make a note of this, that application number especially, you will have been emailed that number, but I would screenshot this page just so that you have it. Have a read through, just make sure everything is correct. And you're gonna click on that disclaimer button and then click pay now. Once you've clicked on that pay now button, it's going to take you to this page where you can either pay by PayPal or debit card. If I click on that debit card button and click continue, it's going to ask me to fill in all these details and then click continue. So I'm not gonna make a payment today for the purposes of this application. I have helped many of my friends with their ESTAs. After putting in the payment details, they then received a payment confirmation. And so the Processing time is a little tricky. Previously, you could get your approval within an hour. Now you do need to plan some time for this. So I would say the earliest you'll receive it is within 72 business hours. I wouldn't count on it same day. If you get it same day, that's fantastic. That's great, but don't count on it. So previously, if you had been at the airport and you saw people scrambling to get their ESTAs done at check-in, you can't do that anymore you will need to have this done. I would definitely do it as soon as you possibly can, so, as soon as you know that you're going to the US and that you have things arranged. 
So once you've done that and you have it, I would actually just have a copy of it somewhere so that when you do go to the airport, if you have to ch show the check-in staff, they should be able to check electronically. But that's it. You're gonna go to the US, you're gonna have a great time. Even if it's in transit, you'll have a great time. And that's it. It's that easy.